You need to get some champion people that are willing to fight this. It's not just getting a group together. I mean, you really need to identify somebody like me um, in your state to push this hard. That is the only way. I spoke at the National State Legislative Conference in Seattle in August about model legislation. And somebody from Georgia, from Atlanta, came up to me and said, we have asthma as a really bad problem in our state, but I don't have anybody coming to me and wanting me to pass any legislation. So my message to all of you is you need to identify some people who are tigers and are zealots like me and do it. That's the only way you're going to get it done. Yeah. That, that's fine. Good ideas are good. And actually, action is part of why we're here today is to formulate the baseline for that action. Uh, Perry Schiffer, City of Christian Hills, Los Angeles. Uh, question for Joe. Could you say a little bit more about presenteeism? It's a new metric to me. Can you, what yeah, data uh, is what that? Again, I'm sorry. Presenteeism? Well, you mentioned. Presenteeism is, well, what uh, presenteeism is when someone comes to work and they're not being productive and they're either uh, got depression and can't even give a damn for that or uh, they're more focused on something else. So up until maybe a week or two ago, you would call it pregnancy football, presenteeism for some guys working a little bit more <laughs> busy than that. But, but the thing is, uh, for employers, it's a big to-do because people make mistakes then. Uh, there's a lot of rework that goes on. Uh, it's just not really an economically viable situation for I th well, I'm not in the co uh, uh, commercial insurance world, but in my conversations on uh, various other boards with people that run big outfits and whatever, uh, they really try to keep their fingers on what's going on. Uh, I mean, the successful companies, I think there's one that's trying to amend an ADU called Northern Supermarkets. The Brooklyn Navy Yard, I guess they've got the okay. They are the number one supermarket chain in the United States. These guys view uh, how they treat the employees as number one. If you have great employees and happy employees, you're going to have great customers. And the thing is, they focus on health care. They are really more than willing to take a look at if we've got employees that have kids that have got health care problems, they go the nine nine yards and beyond to make sure this stuff gets done. So that's an opportunity if, if say, you're looking at social impact bonds uh, to really talk to large employer groups because they're going to have a, a lot of kids with asthma, okay, and say, hey, look, it's going to be in your uh, vested interest to invest in this because it's going to come back to you in a lot of uh, great ways of not only are you going to likely you'll be saving money for medical expenses, but you're going to have decreased absenteeism, decreased pregnancy rates. And that's an important thing for people that run companies. Great. we got another question over here. <coughs> Hello. Um, my name is Danielle Riley, and I run an asthma management program at Wyckoff Hospital. We actually have a grant through New York State that's an emergency relief fund to develop this project. And through it, we have a team of asthma specialists, both educators, navigators, community health workers that are working with our clinicians to transfer care into an outpatient and home setting. And even though we are just halfway done, we've seen a reduction from 77% 77, 77 emergency room visits for asthma at our institution to 54 and transferring that to outpatient. So it's been, it's been wonderful and you know we're preparing for working with DISRUP, but I just want to echo this concern of creating sustainability where only li clinically licensed providers can provide this care because that's not going to maintain our program. And if we can't reimburse for the home-based community health worker collaborations that are going on with local CBOs, we're you know not going to be able to I, I think we have our first volunteer to work on the action team <laughs> to do this. Thank you. We got another? Much as a comment that it, it's old now, it's five years old, 
but um, the Aspen Regional Council actually wrote a business case for employers, um, which talks about presenteeism and absenteeism as well. And it's on our website. Um, the Aspen Regional Council of New England. Um, if you go into resources on the publications, there's a business case both for, they're old, they're both old, actually Monroe's in one of them, but um, one is for uh, a business case for payers and one is a business case for employers. So Stacy actually teed up the question that I have. So I'm Tracy Washington Linger, and I work at the National Asthma Program at EPA. And so when you talk about the business case and the value proposition, that's a lot of the work that we've been doing to support programs to make themselves more reimbursable from payers. And so when I look at the pilot programs that you're supporting and I, I look at the work that you're doing, can you talk a little bit more about what it is you look for in programs in terms of the services, the data that they're providing, the advice, how it is programs make themselves more attractive to payers, and what is, what is it that you look for? And I invite people to also go to asthmacommunitynetwork.org, where we have just a plethora of resources to help you build that business case using some of the things that payers are looking for. So if you could just sure. repeat that. So I mean, I think um, we are, at Health First, we really look for the structure of the program, um, a durable, you know, program that's going to, uh, you know, um, be able to actually deliver what it says. And we have some, uh, I think Shoshana could say this, some, I don't want to say strict, but we have some clear ways that we like to collect data. Um, we deliver a denominator of the high risk or vulnerable populations that we're interested in. We ask the um, organization to be collaborative with us around that. And then we have some ways that we're able to um, structure the reimbursement so that it's, it's possible. Um, I, I do think we're a little bit cutting edge um, here, and you know, Shoshana's nodding her head a little bit there. Um, I think it's because of our model that we're able to do some value-based kinds of programming even before value-based is, is sort of delivered um, through, through the district program. But I do think that I'm glad to speak with any organization in New York City that, or Long Island that is interested in, in testing the model. Sometimes we do things on a pilot basis first. If it works, and if it doesn't work, we, we go from there. So I would say that um, structurally to be absolutely sure you can ramp up and deliver what you're saying you can deliver, be ready to do a pilot. We may not want to do something full speed until we've shown that it, it can actually work. And also, um, it, you know, there have to be some parameters for reporting that help us to, you know, demonstrate that it works. Go ahead, Shoshana. Just to, to add to that, I think that um, it's been a terrific experience to work with Health First so far this year. We just began a pilot um, in 2015 with the Eagle. And I think the, if there's one thing that I could sort of um, disaggregate as the key to our partnership so far as the ability to um, is, is our commitment to data and our ability to very quickly report back to the health plan. We have regular meetings, coordination meetings um, of all kinds, but um, on a daily basis, we're exchanging information about the members that work. Um, and that has been made possible um, for a small CBO. It's, it's probably, probably slightly unusual, but we've invested so heavily in our ability to track and, and manage data. So we have a very robust care management system that allows our clean health workers to use technology in the field and be able to you know, aggregate, analyze, and report back. So we're almost following people, um, I wouldn't say real time, but very close to being able to react and try to be even proactive um, to intervene. Thank you. <laughs> 